Okay. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. Welcome to the Free Play Richardson round, uh, Bartender Roundtable. Yes, hello. Hi, how are you? How are y'all doing? I was just about to ask, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Not too bad. I had some fine mac and cheese for the evening, so I'm pretty set. Ooh, right on. Mac and cheese is dope. Yeah, doctor doctored it up with chicken and some tomatoes and some garlic, trying to feel fancy. Ooh, that does sound so. fancy. Yeah, how's I everyone made, else doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I made some buffalo cauliflower. Ooh. So, so it's like buffalo cauliflower wings. <gasps> oh, yeah. nice. Did you get the recipe from the Alamo website? Because I saw they put their fried cauliflower recipe up there. Whoa, no way. It's um, amazing. No, I uh, I got it from, um, so fun fact, I was vegan for like three years. And uh, I have a lot of vegan cookbooks that I collected during those times. And uh, it was like an old tried and true recipe that I bake. Ooh. And they get like super crunchy and crispy. They're, it's so good. And I'll if I had known that, that I would have right. stolen that from you in Colorado. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, I love fried cauliflower. If anybody doesn't know, David and I actually went to college together in Colorado. Fun fact. Woo -woo. Yeah, we actually talked about that on the stream on Sunday. Oh, really? Yeah, we got to know David quite a bit better on Sunday. Yeah, we were talking first jobs and all that. It was fun. So, <clears throat> is everybody keeping... Are y'all managing to keep busy now that Free Play Richardson is not going as well not going as as frequently as uh as we would like uh yeah for me especially um i mean i i live with my family including ramsey mm -hmm. and like my parents and my grandpa so um and my parents work in the medical field so i mean they're still going to work and everything so i've kind of um adopted the uh, kind of like caretaker of the house so mm -hmm. I'm cleaning a lot I'm cooking everybody's food I'm you know like making sure everything stays sanitized in the house especially since my parents are going to a hospital every single day you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um so yeah I've definitely <laughs> kept busy you're the hero they need and deserve <laughs> oh man that sounds like a lot though <laughs> Yeah, yeah I mean, we're definitely, like, we're we're kind of, like, we have to be safe, you know? We have to mm -hmm, try and, mm -hmm. like, limit the amount of stuff, kind of keep, like, the house sanitary, you know? So, like, taking your shoes off before you come into the house and not tracking that sort of stuff inside. And whenever, if you do go out, like, you, um, whenever you come home, you immediately change out of the clothes that you were wearing outside and, um disinfect the doorknobs and anything that you were touching before and just you know things like that so um but we're managing we're all good healthy as far as we know so well, that's good yeah. i'm glad you guys are staying safe yeah well what about you guys i mean i probably have more of like the harsher reality but we're doing fine over here it's just uh me and my girlfriend Teresa and our two cats so a lot of laser point entertainment. Nice. <laughs> I don't I don't see how that could get old. No, it weirdly enough doesn't ever. It definitely doesn't we for kinda, the cats. And we kind of have both of our cats switch off between being like sleep mode and play mode. So typically one of them is always on. So perfect. Besides that, uh, I got the Lego Harry Potter complete collection on PS4 today. So big moves over here. Nice. Wow. Um, I'm trying to get my girlfriend into gaming, and if anyone actually even has more suggestions besides buying a Nintendo Switch, which seems to be impossible to do now, um, mm -hmm. feel free to throw those out. Suggestions Dude. to get your girlfriend Dude. into gaming? Yeah, like, games that I wouldn't say are, like, I think her biggest issue is that she's having trouble figuring out the, like, navigating the controller. So okay. if anyone knows good PS4 games or just games in general that would be easier to use. She yeah. actually really liked going to the arcade because those are fairly straightforward as long as you stay away from Street Fighter. Right. Uh, do you, do you, um, 
so it's a PS4 you have. Um, mm -hmm. they, they, you can you can download plenty of simple games online that require basically one button or no button. Puzzle games, usually. Yeah, that's actually why I bought Harry Potter. Cause it's basically just a giant Lego puzzle game. Yeah, and you can play that co-op. Co-op games are good, also. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, if you can find a... Like, <laughs> uh, if you can find Harvest Moon, I know we had a sim for the GameCube It's a Wonderful Life one on the PS3. Um, so I don't know about the PS4, but that one's like a very simple game that's easy to just like grind on and stuff like that. That it's very mm -hmm. simple um, actions and stuff like that that will get her into like wanting to play every day. Yeah, I think it's that building up and having something to grind on that is going to be getting her la to latch into it. So if you find something like that, but I don't know if they have one. Nigel suggests Stardew Valley. Ooh, good call. See, I Can't don't even get PS4 that on games. Steam. Hmm? Yeah, I should get that on Steam. That's a good idea. You ever you ever played Diablo three? Yes. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, I, I would suggest that if you're doing local multiplayer PS4, you guys have multiple joysticks. Mhm. Mm okay, so it is. There is a lot of depth there. But at the beginning levels and at the levels, it's the the onus is on you, David, to make sure that you don't like get lost in menu nonsense, and unless she wants to. But if you just sort of like play the uh, the beat 'em up grinding, you know, with her, where you just go around and pop things on the head with your with your melee weapon. <laughs> um, That's not a bad idea. Actually. It's a, That's it's a... it's a lot of fun. I've done it with uh, with uh, significant others in the past and had a ton of fun with that game. Good to know. Perfect. I'm going to look into that tonight. Mm -hmm. Don't and know. What about you, Carissa? What are you keeping a, doing to keep busy? Oh, um, well, mostly I've just been making a lot of deliveries. Like, uh, I've actually had a lot of people interested in the art that I've been posting up for sale. Uh, and so I've mostly just been going around delivering that, getting the house cleaned, uh, watching the dogs, uh, doing my laundry. <laughs> Um, Good oddly things. enough, yeah, yeah, and then it's it's kind of funny, um, because you're talking about games. I don't have a PS4, but um, I've been playing a lot of Fancy Pants Adventure World. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that game, but it's literally just a flash game on the computer, and you're a little stick man, and um, yeah, you run around, and it's really simple and straightforward, and it's easy and a lot of fun. And there's like some some mini games like in some of the levels, depending on which version of the game that you play. So I've done uh, Fancy Pants Adventure World three and four, and in the third one, there's like um, you go into these rooms, and sometimes there's like a time trial, and then other ones um, you have to get these certain like squigglies in order within a certain amount of time. And it's really frustrating, but I can't stop playing. Uh, and I started playing uh, Undertale again. And the first chapter of Delta Rune came out last year, so I started playing that also. Ooh, I'm okay. Catching up on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that I like to do, and there's a lot of stuff that I want to do. And I feel like I always say I'm going to do a lot, but then I never make time for it. And I'm still not even really making time for all of it. I'm just kind of like trying to do bits and pieces of all the things that I want to get to, like a little bit at a time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a lot of time on our hands now, so I mean, might as well. Um, yeah, yeah you made me I mean, feel really guilty hearing that you made dinner, though, because I went out and I bought I bought a Vietnamese food. Hey, but you know what? I would much rather have Vietnamese food instead of everybody have to rely on my cooking skills <laughs> so <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with supporting local business so Absolutely. i just i couldn't help myself i got it i had a hankering for it um and that was so worth it it was so worth going out honestly yeah i bet yeah that sounds amazing i'm sure like nothing really beats like a good home-cooked meal though and kaylee just from like the the cakes that i see you come out with i'm like i bet i bet your cooking's pretty bomb oh thanks <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely try. I mean, it's all like a trial and error type of thing. I guess also whenever we were in college and stuff, that really forces you to, um, especially on like a college budget, you know, where you have little to nothing, 
that you kind of have to learn how to cook for yourself in some way. And eventually you get tired of just eating beans from a can, you know, and <laughs> you have to go up. Yeah. So, um, so it's I don't know. I never get tired of like, eating chili from a can. Hey, you know what? I, I still go for that. Oh yeah. The uh, Trader Joe's chili that they have is bomb. <laughs> like so good. All right, I'm gonna have to check that out next time I I dare to brave the wilderness that is a a market. <laughs> next time you have to venture out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like if I have to, I'll I'll, I'll keep an eye out for it. But so I've been I've been mostly aside from like going and doing these deliveries, um, I've been trying to stay out of the or stay inside the house for the most part. Um, but it has been making me kind of stir crazy. Oh, uh, David, we hmm. have a, uh, a suggestion from you from our um, special Michael Beltran correspondent, Carlitos from Texas. He said get Dead or Alive Extreme 3. Ooh, okay. Your, your mileage I, may vary, though. I don't really oh, like oh my gosh, what three. is that one game that Carlos told me about? It was uh, Life is Strange. I yes. feel like... Teresa would actually be into that. It's more of like a storyline um, kind of game where you kind of make the decisions. So it's not even like you have to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you don't have to not have like, any sort of- It's not like technically in depth. So it's kind of like the Walking Dead game, if you're familiar with that, where like you just watch the story, but then like you decide where the story goes. Just based Oh, Telltale Games. Yeah, kind of like the Telltale yeah. games. Oh, yeah, like yeah. a wolf among us. Yes. I'm so, I have a tab open on my computer to write all of these down, so please send them in if you have any. But these are all great. I'm going to check out literally all of these tonight. Yeah, Life is Strange was really good, because even Ramsey was uh, watching whenever I played it, uh, once Carlos told me about it. And he said, Carlos said that he stayed up all night playing that game, because he just couldn't stop playing because it's like five episodes long and uh ramsey was watching it too and he was super interested in it even though um like because it follows like a girl's story but it's like it's for dudes or girls like it really doesn't matter interesting it's life is have you played the second one or just the first one i've played the first one the second one's already out but i i don't know if all of the episodes are out but i like to kind of binge it <laughs> so do it in like a sitting or two basically makes sense but the first one is out so Teresa can play that one night and finish Sweet. and be like I want to play something else be like alright now what's next yes <laughs> and you're like awesome. haha I did it I'm like haha evil laughs in the corner <laughs> so um how long have you guys all been working for free play or had you been um, I think, who's been working here the longest? Longgren, are you there? I'm trying to poke you. Yeah, no, I'm here. Uh, then it's definitely I'm... Mike. <laughs> it's definitely Mike. How long have you been working <laughs> for, be for free play? And fuck you, Lego. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Mike, the, 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 the very talkative Mike Longgren definitely been working since day zero. Before day one. day one, right? Was your so first day, was your first day day one, or did you now. did you do anything before that? Before that, uh, not really. We had like uh, the two, what are they? Like not the 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 pre events, the pre events before the we beta. opened, but that was it. Like came in, clean games. Oh, I think I know what's causing the echo. It's me. Let me hit this button right here. I bet this goes away. There we go. Let me know if the audio cleans up for everybody. Cool, cool. Yeah, we're talking on Discord, so we just respond here, not listen to the stream. Um, so Blomgren's been here the longest. I think, Carissa, you probably the second longest? You've been in over a year? Lost voice on the stream. Sorry. Uh, Kaylee beats me as far as uh, how long we've been working there because I was only about to get my two years in June. So it's been like a year and a half. For and it's been two years for me 
um, the very beginning of this month. How did Kaylee, how did you start working for us? So uh, it started because, you know, Ramsey, my brother, was working there. Right. Um, and then... I wish Ramsey was here so I could put up pictures of him as well because he's, like, cuter than Instagram model cute. I know, absolutely. But he's raiding right now, so... I know. All about that wow life. I know, right? <laughs> wow officer life. You can't miss it. Do for his Duty. team. Duty calls. <laughs> so, Ramsey started working there before I did. About, like, a year before I did. And uh, it was around, like, February time that um, they... Uh, they were in need of another bartender, but specifically for the weekends. And I was working an office job Monday through Friday. And um, I was just kind of looking for something else that I could pick up as well. And Ramsey said that they needed somebody for the weekend. So I said, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll start working. And um, was working by myself on Saturdays and Sundays. And eventually after like the summertime, um, there was like full time freed up, so I ended up dropping my office job and coming straight to here. So it was it was related to Ramsey. It was yes. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I don't know, I, I, I I remember you coming together. Like you you've always been linked, of course, because you're brother and sister. So um, I definitely think of you and Ramsey together. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I I brought you all here today. Uh, specifically because I, 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 I love retail stories. And I guess we're a form of retail, but I bet bartender stories are crazy. Um, can I get you, uh, I guess starting with Carissa, can I get your uh, your nuttiest? Uh, change the names to protect the innocent, if you would. <laughs> um, but can I get your craziest uh, uh, Free Play Richardson bartender story, Carissa? I mean, honestly, that's really not fair because there are so, so many, and I only have to choose one. You don't have to choose um, one. Just choose one for now because we got time. It's the end of the world after all. That's true. That's true. Um, okay. Well, uh, the I'll the be right back. I gotta. One. I have to. Uh, David, you go. You take a turn after Carissa and just go in that that order, and that, I'll be do. right back. Right back. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to start light and then get back get to the crazy ones later so that I don't get like too exciting off the bat and people have to stick around for the more interesting story. <laughs> Do a softball pitch, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, let's see. And he said he specified free play Richardson, so that's the only reason I'm like the other one that I had would have been really interesting, but it happened in Denver. Maybe just as like a bartender at free play. I mean, I'm sure this story we've never heard before, so I'm down to hear it. Yeah, and it's pretty light to start. Uh, and to me, it was hilarious uh, because I had this one, not really a regular, but he was someone who would come in every now and then, and he was super cool, and he was always really fun. Um, and he would he like to give like unsolicited life advice uh and so i'm i'm like life advice from this person trademark uh, um and so this one night he comes in and it's his brother's birthday which is cool that's totally fine and he wants to get his brother the barley wine that's on draft because at denton there's always a barley wine uh on draft and if you have ever had if you ever had a barley wine it's, it doesn't taste too great Typically, they're not super, like, I guess unless you're really used to it and you've drunk them a lot, I'm, I'm just not super into them. I don't think they're very good. Uh, and he orders one for his brother, and his brother's like, no, I'm not going to drink that. Uh, but it had the highest ABV, so he wanted to get it for him for his birthday. And so instead, what he does, since his brother isn't going to drink it, he takes this 10-ounce glass, and I watch him knock it back in one gulp. Like, Ooh. literally just, like, open up his gullet and just downed it in, like, Miss. no time. I was just so astounded. We didn't serve him after that. 
Uh, and we, we made sure <laughs> we got a why. lot of water in them. <laughs> Uh, but it was just so crazy for me to witness, and it was- it wasn't even, um... Like, I hadn't even been working there for very long at that point. Uh, so... Yeah, that's- that's my first crazy story, I guess. A trial by fire entry. Yeah, no kidding. Oh my- oh my goodness. I was like, oh, I don't think he means anymore. I think that was like a 14% beer. Ooh. Oh my god. How do you yeah. do that? <laughs> yeah, barley ones are typically uh, pretty high ABV, so it was it was pretty up there, like between twelve and fourteen percent for. Okay, that's uh yeah, that's a quick way to get the night started. Yeah, no kidding, and finished. So the one that I can think of to start off for a tamer, crazier story. Um, I know we're excluding names, and I'll try to exclude profanity in this, but he came hot and heavy with a lot of profanity. This man who I had never seen before walks in. It's a Friday, probably at like 7 o'clock, so still a little light outside. And he comes in in flip-flops, these just like short shorts, and a oversized pink hoodie with the hood up. And he walks up to the front register to get his band in, and he goes, I am so fucking drunk. I chugged five Four Locos in front of the KFC, and I'm here to party. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and so I, it took me a sec, because I was like, I've never been hit that hard with just, like, the intent of someone so fast. <laughs> oh, my and goodness. And so I, I was like, well, you can come in, but... I'm, you just told me that you're like already overserved. I I can't give you anything. And he goes, we'll see about that. And so what? I give him I give him his band. He disappears for probably twenty ish minutes, and he comes back up. And I realize he comes back up because he kind of like didn't intentionally push someone out of the way, but he kind of like fell into them. And so he's sitting. I see this happen, and I turn around, and I'm like, what's up, buddy? I'm like, there's water right there if you want it. And he decides to, like, harass me for this IPA. And I kind of am evading him. I finally get him to order some mini tacos, and he orders them, and then he starts giving them out to everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he then he Wait, orders Wait, free mini tacos plate. and I wasn't there? Uh, oh, what's up? Why am I not there for free mini taco day? I know. If I had known, I would have posted about it. Mm -hmm. But so he's, like, handing it. He's, like, becoming a celebrity. He's handing out these tacos not eating any of them still staggering and he finally oh, no. looks at me he finally looks at me and i'm like prepared to tell him no that he can't have a drink and he just goes i'm gonna walk home and he just disappeared oh uh okay so well, I don't know at if least he was you didn't have to deal with him anymore <laughs> yeah i don't know if he was a hallucination if he was a <laughs> manifestation of my stress or something but taco man showed up and delivered and left us in peace well, at least somebody got free tacos out of that. Yeah, he made friends yeah. and then vanished as quickly as he entered. Kaylee, you have any bonkers free play Richardson bar stories? Um, I do. I have a lot. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of. I have one in my mind go. that I know all. Go of with you that one because we can we can we can cycle back around if you need if okay. you need the floor again. Okay. Well, this is one that I know all of you bartenders know, um, but I feel like <laughs> we need to share this one because um, even to this day, I still am like grossed out and like I still kind of laugh at it now in hindsight. But um, so it was like a Tuesday that I, I come in and I work on my own and um, I come in from uh the kitchen and i'm about to head over to the bar and then i hear our uh i hear lonnie in the guy's bathroom just like shouting profanities and getting all frustrated and so i'm like oh my god what has happened like <laughs> is everything okay and uh i go walk over and i always see derek every time i come into work and i'm like is is Lonnie okay? And he was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm like, why? What happened? And he was like, last, <laughs> last night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you know what happened. <laughs> he was like, last night, somebody decided 
to like <laughs> have these shits all over the guy's bathroom <laughs> and told nobody <laughs> and left it in there all night. And so the first thing that Lonnie comes into when he goes to his oh, restroom is oh, just oh, a mess no. in the guy's bathroom. Mm. And so he he had been cleaning it up since like that oh, morning. And I forgot who it was that night before i don't know if it was you carissa or if it was danny um but i think it was me went... oh wait really because <laughs> what had happened what i heard was that this like it was 11 o'clock we had already closed you know and um it was like time to clean up and everything and all of a sudden this guy that was in earlier just all of a sudden just runs back in and is like like fast walking to the to the bathroom and then, like, when he comes out, he has, like, his, he's barefoot. Oh, I know. He has his shoes in his hands and is, like, walking out like that. And then Lonnie said that whenever he went in there to clean it, like, he found his underwear and his socks, mm. like, in the trash can. And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> Did it, like, run down his leg and got it on his socks? I'm Ooh. so confused. But, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, so now thinking about it, like, yeah, that was really funny. But, man, I feel bad for Lonnie and what he's had to go through. In oh, bathroom. yeah. I don't I don't even know if I could ever get Lonnie to do this. And, 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 and the, his stories must be to infinity. Yeah. It might have to be, be like, you got R. all night. So Lonnie will uh, take pictures if it's really bad. Oh and no! He'll save them. Oh my god! By save so them, he means them? text them to Blomgren. No, he does have my number uh, through the group chat, but he has never sent me anything. And thankfully, because I cannot put up with that shit, which is the same reason why he didn't know the day before or the you know until the day after. Um, Carlos knows it best. Um, so well, Carlos said. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. So like, uh, I open the bathroom door and I just like the the smell just hits my face. Like I don't even try to look below the partition, <laughs> and it's just horrifying. And before you know, before I look in there, Carlos is screaming, "Mike, Mike, <laughs> Mike!" And I do not have it in me to go look. I don't. <laughs> that was so funny. It was so funny. They're like, "Go look, go look, go look." I was like, "I'm not gonna go look. You go look." And they're like, "No, we're not gonna go look." And then who did go look? Someone did go look. Carlos looked because he was all up in it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd say, "It's lit." It's lit. It definitely lit. And would he be wrong? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I trust in Carlos, although maybe not when it comes to that. Yeah. Do you uh, do you have a, a crazy bar story that comes to mind, or forty Blomgren? Uh, oh, I have I have about forty. Um, I believe you. And I couldn't even tell you which one to start with. I so I mean it's uh, it's it's just years and years of uh, someone getting too drunk. You know, sometimes like a customer steps out of line, hits his wife. Pulls Oof. a knife on another guest and Oof. sometimes acts like he knows the owner, that kind of thing. And or a box cutter if they don't have a knife or, or a box Yeah, anything like that. It's just it's just weird shit that, you know, no one really thinks about until they're behind the bar or, in, you know. Uh, people kind of, you know, they, they don't really see the entire picture and they kind of think you're, all that, uh, you're not all that busy, you know, nothing's going on. Sorry, you're breaking in and out, Blomgren. Yeah, take it off push to talk. Yeah, so they're suggesting that you take it off push to talk, if you can hear me, Mike. And I will message him. All right, so... He's going, he's getting there, probably. Yeah, probably. Uh, I will message him directly <laughs> and say... Hey, Mike, can you hear me? Uh, there you go, can you hear me? I can't. I, we can, yes. Yeah, they were suggesting that you take it off push to talk. Yeah, no, every time I turn my phone down, the screen would time out. So, um, uh, so, okay, so a lot of people, they, they don't really see, you know, what's going on from the other side of the bar. You know, they just think, oh, all you got to do is, you know, serve a beer, put in food, 
and there's not really much else to think about. And then, you know, behind the scenes, there could be something happening that, you know, no one knows until a cop car rolls out, uh, until, you know, there's some guy screaming in the parking lot with, uh, without a shirt on. He just wants to fight everyone. And then it just, everyone just congregates oh. to the window. They're looking out the window and they see everything. Or when they try to walk behind the bar to get a beer. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... How often? Does that happen often? Uh, you know, it, does, it, it doesn't really happen often, but it always happens when you're not expecting it. And just when it happens, it's just like... It, it's not to say the entire night is shot, but it's just like the vibe doesn't recover. People are all freaked out. Maybe a couple people are still drinking, but just everyone's too curious to play games, to do anything, and that's it. I've had children I've had come children behind the bar every once in a while. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Carlos just brought up a story about a lady that walked into the kitchen and threw money in the kitchen. Uh, that's another really good story. What? It was out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, Let's the hear one it. that came in from the back. Right. So for the longest time, we would keep our back door uh, to the arcade cracked open because there was no uh, door handle from the outside. So the only way you could do is like, you know, kind of pull it open. Uh, well, everyone in the kitchen was closing down, cleaning up shop. And this lady just walks in and Han walks up to the bar and he's just like, Mike, uh, there's someone there's some lady in the kitchen like, all right, well. I'll go, you know, see who she is. I kind of know who's in the building. And it's just some random lady in a wife beater. And she's asking, I guess, to buy drugs, maybe. She's just like, oh, no, I'm not trying to be here. I'm just trying to clean. Uh, she pulls out, like, a big wad of bills out of her bra and just throws it on the the tables. And she would, ref you know, she just refused to leave. And it didn't really make any sense. We figured someone was, like, kind of after her. But... You know, she's not really willing to listen. She's just like, no, no, I just need to be here. I just need to be here. I just need to clean. I need, you know, she's got all this money. Uh, then we had to call the cops on her. And then she wandered off and was to never be seen again. She might have actually gone to Chase Place. But uh, the look on, you know, her look compared to the people that are in Chase Place could have been anybody. So. Oh, she just disappeared in the weeds immediately? That, yeah, that was it. She just went out the back door and maybe walked around the building to Chase Place and went incognito. So. It's kind of nice, just out of our hair. Wow. She fixed the problem for you. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, do you guys, did you guys have to call the police often? Every couple months, maybe, and yeah. that was it. Yeah. Who who normally made the call? Was it you, Mike? Yeah, it was me. Yeah. It, pretty much every time, unless I had to like yell at someone to go do something. I don't know. Yeah, no, no I, it was I, it was always me. Every every crisis I've had that involves someone, you know, like these stories, it, it usually did end up being you that, that was ultimately the man uh, uh, tasked to to, <laughs> to to handle it. You, you handled it so well. I, I've seen you get us out of so many difficult situations that I, I don't even know how to describe it other than just like, you know, the, the, just the crazy stuff that happens at a bar. It's it's kind of frustrating, and you, you just kind of get into a rhythm with it. You know, it's kind of like you give them one chance, two chance, and then afterwards, you know, once once I'm kind of already figured out how it's going to go, I just, you know, it's like I flip a switch and just do everything I can to get them out. Um, but there was one time that I was so rattled. Uh, it was actually the one time the guest came behind the bar for, like, the second or third time, mm -hmm. started shouting. He was actually in with, like, a, a scheduled party, so it was even more uncomfortable when – Everyone starts walking out, but uh, uh, he was just, uh, you know, shouting obscenities, uh, calling, you know, racial epithets and stuff, which is kind of weird, but I don't know. They ended up leaving, but as I was, like, talking to the cops, the guy's yelling at me to, like, fight me. I think I actually gave the police, like, my home address. I, I couldn't actually remember the, uh, the arcade's address, which is pretty easy, 1730 East Beltline Road, but... You know, they're asking, like, is this a correct address? And I'm just like, no, it's, uh... And the guy's, like, walking out the door and his entire party is, and I didn't want to go look at, like, uh, the the four numbers on the front window, so, you know, 1730 to see if it would ring a bell, but I don't know. And then I just kind of hung up, and I could tell the operator was a little pissed at me for, you know, being a little flustered and out of my mind, so... Yeah, well, I mean, well, I mean you're in one of those situations, so I would... I, man... 
Yeah, I have compassion for you. We see a lot. Yeah, our, like our main job is not to put out fires, but we have to do it. It's really obnoxious because the only thing we really want to do is make money, you know, serve drinks, serve food, keep people happy, talk to people. And instead we have to put up with, you know, like one or two people every so often that just, you know, escalate everything. I, I can understand. The You're the t T.O. of the bar, basically. Like that's that my job is T.O. Um, I'm trying to find where that echo is from. Bah. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, you guys are the T.O. of the bar. You're, you're in charge. Sometimes you get into awkward situations, and there's, uh, man, yeah, there's so many. I, like, like if we have the T.O. roundtable at some point, then I, I have plenty of, of issues with, or not issues, but stories of people crying and, and uh, asking to be back in tournaments and um, just all kinds of craziness that you would never have expected. Um, how would, how are the, how, when the police get there, is it, is it a pretty like chill thing every time? Like, do they, do they, do they, are you, are they helpful? Like, how do they feel towards you when you're, when you're calling the police out to the bar? Uh, you know, they're actually pretty helpful. It's really surprising. Like, uh, my background with police is not the greatest, uh, it's just like, you know, from my suburban background, they're not looking to help you, but in this case, uh, representing a business, it's perfectly fine it's they're very helpful they're not really trying to get anyone in trouble aside from the people that are causing problems so yeah uh, and every time i've ever been pulled over by richardson police i've never gotten a ticket they're very polite so no complaints oh. okay good for you good for you mike <laughs> um carissa did you have Just any more throw crazy that, that little brag in there huh yeah no no I'm tickets bragging. i've also not gotten a ticket but you know i'm not speeding through richardson a lot Car i just i just think cops don't like me Oh no! I feel like Carissa ticket story time is is it will go too long. Do you have any good any other good stories? You said you had several. Oh. Now is Carissa losing us. Oh, no, I sorry. I, I was just saying that like um every time I get pulled over, say for one time, I get a ticket, and I'm always super polite, and I always do what I what I'm told. You know, like I, I'm straightforward with, with them, and I'm I'm apologetic. It's usually for speeding. Um, and I still always get a ticket and then my friends are all like, oh, we just have to play dumb. Like, act like, act like a just dumb, like I was really blonde at the time. Like my hair is green now, but it was super platinum for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I like, just play up on that. And I'm like, no, I don't want to be an idiot. I don't want to act like one. And I just, I just get a lot of tickets. I say a lot of tickets, but like I said, every time I get pulled over, I get a ticket. And then I have other friends who are like, I've never gotten a ticket. Like, I get pulled over, but I never get a ticket. And I'm like, how? How? Teach me. Teach me your ways, please. Uh, yeah, I really don't understand. Whoever said that women don't get a, a, don't get tickets because they're women, that's such a lie. Because every single time I have got, gotten pulled over, I have gotten a ticket as well. Okay, thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I have not. I only got pulled over for speeding one single time because it was actually outside of Grapevine Mills Mall when I was at GameWorks Grapevine regular. Uh, they had a, I, I took, what is it? Keller Springs Road turns into Sandy Lake Road, turns into Whitlock Lane, turns into Grapevine Mills North Boulevard. So I would literally follow that road all the way from my Addison job all the way out to Game, GameWorks Grapevine. And it would be 40 miles an hour all the way until there is a one sign behind a tree that turned it into 30 miles an hour when it turned into Grapevine Mills North Boulevard and I got nailed like a hundred yards outside of that sign and just just didn't even know and uh I he believed my story enough to to let me off with a warning so that's that's the only time I've actually been pulled over for speeding and and thus never gotten a ticket dang I wish the first time I ever got pulled over I got a ticket and it was because I was gone over a summer and didn't know that there was construction going on on a road. And uh, this is like a road that is like close to my house that like you only go down it if you live in the area. So you have no excuse, you know. And I was going down it and there were workers present. And it was like immediately once I got on there, I was going like the usual speed limit on there. But it had like knocked down to half 
of that. So I was going 40 whenever it was supposed to be 20. And there was a tree when I went back on that same road later on that there was a tree covering that like um, workers present like um, work road, like speed limit is 20 miles an hour kind of thing. So I didn't even see it. And this cop immediately on a motorcycle pulls me over and like doesn't even listen to me and like writes me a ticket. And because there were workers present, it got doubled. So I'm like, oh, great. Awesome. Uh, Let's see. Lego says an LTC helps reduce the number of tickets. I don't know what an LTC is. Do uh, Kaylee, you said that you had more stories? Yes. So I just thought of this one too. So um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know that we have the occasional homeless person that comes around uh, free play and kind of like loiters around there. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, randomly, this is like on another weekday, uh, there's this guy that like pulls up on like this bike and has on this like dirty white shirt and these scrub pants on that look like they've been like really worn down and he just like lays his bike down on the concrete um he looks a little rough and he comes in and i try to stop him saying like hey you can't come in unless you pay and he's like oh well i just need to use the restroom and i was like you can't use the restroom unless you're paying to come in Mm -hmm. and he was like i just i really have to go and i was like okay whatever just uh, as long as you come back like you can't you can't play the games unless you you pay so Uh i see him kind of like uh walking by and going and kind of like pretending like he's gonna walk to the restroom and then kind of starts like veering another way and so i tell Derek, i'm like hey that that dude just came in And he said he was going to go use the restroom, but now he's kind of like going around to the games. And he was like, okay, well, we'll just keep an eye on him. And so he kind of just starts like walking around and stuff like that. And after a little bit, there's like a customer that comes up and they're like, yeah, this dude that just came around, like, I think he just pooped his pants. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, because he has like a brown streak on the back of his pants. And I'm like, oh my God. How does this always happen? Like someone's <laughs> pooping in this place. <laughs> so um, I tell Derek, I'm like, hey, you're going to have to like, you're going to have to kick him out. And so he goes over to the guy and he's like, dude, you're going to, you're going to have to go. Uh, and, and, and the dude's like, okay, well, I need to use the restroom. And he was like, yeah, but you didn't do that before. Uh, can you, you you're going to have to go. And so the guy walks out and stuff like that and goes over to the front of the the place and kind of like lingers around still kind of I guess in his brain deciding like okay what am I going to do next and then he goes outside and then he starts laying down and one of our customers goes out there to like smoke a cigarette and he starts talking to the guy and all of a sudden he pulls out his phone and gives it to the the guy that just pooped his pants and then he takes his phone back and then all of a sudden like the fire department and an ambulance come and I'm like what is happening like this went from zero to 100 really quick Mm -hmm. and uh (laughs) Ramsey Ramsey came in this is the free play discord hey Ramsey (laughs) hey stranger hey what's going on guys hey dude I, I'm telling a story about one of the homeless people that came in. Oh, okay. And uh, Ram- Ramsey, feel free to join us. That gives me an excuse to pull one of your Instagram pictures. I'm uh, I'm I'm raiding it well. No. That's what I already told them. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I know. I know. I'm getting sweaty. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so anyway, so this guy, like he called the ambulance and the customer comes back in and I'm like, what happened? He was like, the guy told me that his stomach hurt and that he needed to call um, the police or like the the ambulance. And so he, the guy put, calls like 911 and then talks to them and they and uh, puts him on speaker and like the guy starts talking to him and then they call him by his name. So this guy had been like, like he's like a regular, like, hey, call nine one one because I my stomach hurts and I need to get picked up, kind wow. of thing. But we were just Dang. we were his place that day. 
felt so bad. But again, it was just another poop story. Just That's... someone poop their pants. Yeah, I, 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 I totally, I, I've, I've had many encounters where that's the creepiest one where you 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 talk to the next level of person or the person that's not related to me because it's always toing with me it's always tournament related stuff but someone from an entirely different field is like oh yeah yeah yeah, we know that person by name like okay well i guess i'm glad i'm not alone yeah that's so crazy um do do you guys i i can never recall a fight in free play Richardson, do you guys have to like break them up at all ever? Uh, domestic ones. Yeah, that's what it is. The I mean, close... I've seen I've seen a couple domestic disputes. Uh, other than that, I I'm not sure unless yeah. anyone else has seen any. Yeah. Blomgren had some wild stories of like people with box knives. You just call the police immediately when that happens. I assume so. Oh yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Just uh, as soon as I found out, I mean, there's no like asking, "Hey, do you have a do you have a box cutter or anything sharp?" And did you talk to that? Person? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Nah, the police can figure it out. Like, I'm not. I'm yeah. not trained to not handle a, this, and I don't really want. Not it. A, not about all that. How? Uh, I, I I've had a I've had a question f for. I don't. I'm not TABC certified because I'm terrified of being responsible for other people's drinking. How do you guys know when to to cut someone off? I mean, well, it, it'll tell you in, like, your TBC, um, like, in the course that you take, it'll let you know, like, signs to look for mm -hmm. uh, when people are slurring their words. They typically try to avoid eye contact. Um, their eyes tend to get uh, a little droopy or they, like, they don't really have any clear focus. Mm -hmm. um, they'll try to, like, mumble or say whatever it is that they want under their breath so that you can't tell that they don't really know what they're saying. Okay. And it's a lot of action based stuff and it's a lot of just like looking at um like just their body language if they're not being talkative or just, and just like trying to like use your best judgment to gauge how much they've already had and there's a lot of factors that go into it like you got to look at somebody and be like okay well um it would definitely take fewer drinks for a a small petite woman to be over her limit than it would for like a six foot uh like a six foot burly man uh so you just kind of have to like gauge like how many drinks they've had in a certain amount of time and whether or not they've eaten had they been going outside a lot and can do you notice if they've been going next door to chase place oh my goodness how how challenging is it to be right next to, to chase place I know on the weekends it can be kind of tough because it'll be really busy and you won't always be able to keep track of the people who are um, uh, who are coming and going because there's already so many people there. And so you can't just like always keep uh, like a hawk eye on every single person and you'll lose track of people for like hours at a time. But like if they come back and it seems like they're over their limit or they seem a little bit more inebriated than uh than usual and they've only had like the one drink you can typically assume they've been going next door yeah that's uh that's a that's crazy <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you guys exist I've, I've always been happy that you guys exist um man I, I i i can't imagine how much more difficult my job would have been if it wasn't for you guys taking the responsibility behind the bar um yeah, thank thanks for 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 all of that. I don't I don't even know how to thank you enough. Like you guys did it silently. Like you're you're like the perfect referees. Like I never heard any of that. I never really encountered any of that. Every once in a while, um, I would find somebody who I was like that person probably had too much, and then you guys would like all look at me in unison and say that person has already been cut off. We definitely know. It's usually really easy to tell. Yeah, but I mean, applause to you guys, because I mean, I work mostly during the week, so I don't get the blunt of, you know, weekend people, you know, that are really wanting to get litty, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, applause to you guys for sure about, you know, taking that initiative. Hmm. I don't know. The hardest part for me is like having people come in on the weekends and the first thing they order is a Vegas bomb. And I'm like, why are you here? Like, what are you really doing here? Like, if you came here to drink and get turned with your friends, like, please for the love of god go somewhere else our games are expensive yeah 
I'm wondering why, like, whenever people go to an arcade and they're like, we want shooters, I'm, I'm like, this is an arcade. <laughs> now, and now we're asking them to come in by having White Claw. <laughs> oh i know i know i mean and we had a gentleman already like come in and stand on the pong table during a group event uh he wanted to stand on the pong table for a company photo that they at the company party they were at and we told him like like he was cut off for sure like like yeah jay pong he's like, well, i didn't even have that much to drink and we i was like we don't care like you're you're making a fool of yourself you're standing on our games like that's not okay we just don't feel comfortable serving you at this point and then that was the last we saw of jay pong right right it's it's been a while <laughs> since he's been around i'm just kidding that definitely was not jay pong or at least i don't think it was definitely probably possibly wasn't jay pong <laughs> <laughs> Bully Mania has got the wrong type of shooters. Um, has uh, I, I has everyone? Let me just just go around. Like like does does have you ever had um people be um strangers be too amorous with you uh at the at the bar? Uh, I guess I'll just start with Kaylee. Uh yeah. <laughs> is... Um, unfortunately, a lot of the time it is a lot of the older men mm -hmm. that try to hit on you and I shut it down real fast. Is, um, was, it's a lot of like, um, you know, sometimes if it's like a dad that comes in with like their older son, you know, so it's like a, like a man in his like seventies, you know? And so, um, I kind of just like laugh it off and just let it be. But there are a lot of men that come in that are in like their forties and stuff like that. Forties and fifties that. Well, we remember we're going to change names to protect the innocent. So every name should be Beltran. <laughs> <laughs> so Beltran comes in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and <laughs> so the, like there's, there's one regular that I, I don't know if all of you know, but I just cannot stand him. Because every time he comes in, he always, with, I'm pretty much every single girl bartender that's there, he's tried to hit on. Beltran. And, what? Uh, remember, Beltran. Yes. Okay. So, Beltran comes in. There you go. And I'm like, yeah, how's it going? And Beltran said, he's like, well, I'm so much better now that you're right in front of me. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's going to be one of those days. So, <laughs> I just stop immediately stop talking to him and he was like, "Well, what did I say something wrong? Like wh what did I say?" And I'm like, "I just didn't like that comment that you said to me." And he was like, "Oh, well, I'm just trying to like just perk you up, sweetheart." And I'm like, ah, ah, "Do not call me sweetheart." <laughs> so and I just go off on him and now like every single time that he comes in, I like do not talk to him and he knows not to push push my buttons and then anytime that i'm at least like civil with him he'll try to push it again and i'm like oh you just we're mm, bringing it right back um but yeah i know it, for me especially it's a lot of the older guys that play that like oh it's so much better now that you're here in front of me or like putting on a wristband and they're like does uh -huh, this mean you're uh -huh. now what? That's kind of, that's too funny. Blomgren, what what about you? Has has Beltran gotten too amorous with you? Uh, let me turn on the mic thing real quick. Hold on. You got it. So uh, so Beltran, I I don't know for a hundred percent. I think so. Beltran has been dating the same person for about ten years, mm -hmm. and. I think Beltran and his partner might be swingers. I'm not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Beltran, that's probably 50, daughter that's my age. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Beltran. Uh, <laughs> she's offering to buy me lunch. You know, I have her number. It's not entirely weird. Uh, she, apparently, Beltran and Beltran's partner uh, rent, is now renting, like, the penthouse somewhere in Addison, like, some very nice apartment. Mm -hmm. And they're telling me, oh, we're going to have this party. You need to come there. And I am horrified that I'm going to get this invite and... I'm going to be the first person to show up and it's going to be me and Beltran and no <laughs> Beltran's partner. <laughs> My, Beltran's already got his, his, his mission accomplished when you show up. Yeah. Ouch. Oh yeah. Beltran's always looking at me, big smiles, big hug. Mm -hmm. Beltran is pretty busty and you know, it just, it's very strange. 
it's everything is just weird and i'm and you know a very nice person i like them a lot but you know boundaries it's okay i like the attention maybe but it's it's very ambiguous and it's weird oh, what about you david you ever have uh beltran getting too amorous with you beltran and i are old adversaries yes uh any any generic uh amorous uh people getting too amorous with you at, at the bar stories uh it will be a lot of moms usually with their kid so in this case it would be beltran's mom oh yeah it'll be beltran's mom there you go um names beltran's change to protect the innocent yes beltran's mom will come in it will typically be on sunday mm -hmm. so you know at noon on sunday it's not that i'm not present but there's a lot of kids running around and there's a lot of things to just focus on. And so it's always very disarming when Beltran's mother comes up and, you know, slips me her number or tries to hold my hand as I walk by Killer Queen to go restock or use the restroom. It's, it's odd. I'm trying to think of anything. The note really. card, the note card, David. Oh, yeah. I had somebody actually, hold on. I have this on my fridge. I can read this note card to you. It was Beltran. It was absolutely Beltran. Okay. Can't wait. You okay. still have this card. Oh, I took it and mounted it on my fridge. <laughs> so upon reopening, Beltran has requested this policy. So it says, I think all free play workers should be required to wear name tags with name, age, sexual orientation, and relationship status. I really want to ask out the hot blonde guy, but I'm nervous. Okay. Okay. Well, there you so, go. So perhaps when we redraft the Constitution oh of Free Play, God. we can implement those things. Or we could just get you a shirt that says the hot blind guy. Or You know, I've been mistaken for a blonde before, that. I'm just saying. Palmer might have it right. They were probably talking about Tommy. Tommy also brought up that they could have been talking about Tommy. And I challenged <laughs> him to an arm wrestle for the card, and he weirdly said no. <laughs> <laughs> so until he arm wrestles me for the card i claim the title all right we should stream this <laughs> everyone take bets um my venmo is <laughs> carissa did uh beltran or his mom get to uh any too amorous with you um i don't know i've had a uh, some experiences with some do, is is do you have the worst play. time of it of anybody like this oh, oh my god oh my god yeah okay is that is that the case you guys are all here is that this is carissa get it the worst of anybody i i would probably say so okay <laughs> yeah okay. no no i i couldn't say that like i feel like it just depends on the i mean in the, yeah like i feel like manis got it pretty bad too but Manis, Manis isn't here. She'll we'll ha she'll have to be on our like uh our, our uh season one free play Richardson bartender roundtable. But uh, how, the how, after dark edition. Yes. How, how about uh? Can you can you think of one uh Carissa to to share? Yeah. Okay. I remember uh, it was at Beltran. You gotta you gotta change the name I to mean, protect the I, innocent. I've got a few, but the one that I'm gonna go ahead and say mm -hmm. uh it, it's kind of funny because there was this one guy that came in. And I, he confided in me while I was at the bar. He, he said that he was on a lot of acid. And I was like, word, okay, I'm going to take care of you. Like, you don't need to drink anything. We're going to make sure that, like, you know, no one says anything too crazy to you. And I was just, like, being really friendly with him, and we were having a good time. And I didn't expect him to remember me, but he comes back in um, another time, and he, like, remembers me by name. And I was like, oh, no, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> like, uh, um, you're, 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 you're Beltran's hero now. You, you helped him on that acid trip. Yeah, well, he came in with his kids and, uh, kept and he back was on bar, acid? And, like, asking me questions. Yeah, was Beltran with his kids when he was on acid? No, he wasn't with his kids when he was on acid, thankfully. Okay. Like, okay. that... That would have been really strange, and I would have been really concerned. But they, they were at a sitter that night. But he like comes in with his kids, and then like is asking me like all about my life and like the things I like to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, well, at the time I was really into karaoke. And so then he's just like trying to invite me to do stuff, and I'm like, oh, I mean, I'm really not interested in 
in, like, doing anything outside of this interaction that we're already having. What's, uh, what's the worst pickup line you guys have heard? Let's see. Let me, let me start with the guys first because I, I don't know if they've had it or not. So, David, have you heard a bad pickup line in free play? Uh, are you gay? There you go. How many times did you hear that one? Twice. Twice. I haven't gotten any other pickup lines but that, and that's the only one I could really qualify as a pickup line. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, fair enough. Blomgren, what about you? Uh, I don't know if they constitute pickup lines, but uh, Jeremy Golden, he comes in pretty tough sometimes. You mean Michael Beltran? Names change. Oh, no, I mean Jeremy Golden. I mean, it's just like all these – are puns pickup lines? Like, you know, corny dad joke? You're right. That does sound like Golden. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe. I don't know. If Golden's in the chat, maybe he can can uh, <laughs> clarify. Uh, what about you, Kaylee? Worst pickup line you've heard at free play? It was. It's definitely the one where I put on the person's wristband and they interrupt me and they say, "Does this mean that we're married now?" Oh my god. That's uh. Yeah, that one's gonna work. What about you, yeah. Carissa? Um. I don't know, honestly. I kind of forget them pretty pretty fast, but it was really funny because there was this one guy who left me his number once, and instead of putting of leaving his name, he wrote your future. Yeah. Remember, uh, Beltran, protect the, protect the innocent here. Yeah, well, he, I mean, he didn't leave his name, so it's fine. He wrote <laughs> your future, so that's... that's... Your future, Beltran. Yes. Your Bel future, yeah, Beltran. I, I felt that one was pretty cringy. Beltran is all of our future. Um, so I, I actually have, you, you guys deal with way, way more of it than me because you guys are interacting with people as they get their drinks and get more drinks. But I definitely have some interactions on this level, uh, particularly like out in a, like walking around, um, and with the advent of Killer Queen, something about that game and the close proximity um, has people coming around, and I've definitely had um, a, a few times, like they kind of blend in my head. I, I, I'm guessing, you know, you guys are similar. You, you have them blend together. But I remember a, a mom not terribly long ago uh, with her kid. Uh, she had had plenty, and she was, you guys inf informed me, she was indeed cut off. Uh, but she was just, I don't know, her arms were like, kind of working the way around as we're playing Killer Queen and you're you're so good at this game and you you're the best and and just just all 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 invading my personal space and and uh I I'm always trying to fight through it and and play through it uh, as long as they're not, you know, if they put their arm around my my shoulder then I'll I'll tolerate it probably more than I should but um I I I, I end up like putting her over on the other side of, of Killer Queen so that she's not interfering with the other players and I'm just sort of like I'm the meat shield and uh and then I see the the little kid there just just like mom not again oh. so I, I've I, I've had so many of those where where people just get just just a little bit too uh too physical on the Killer Queen machine always a trip Oh, David, you're right. You're right. Beltran's mom. My bad. Beltran's mom. On a Saturday, and oh, I was I like, exactly "Hey, we cut off this one lady about. blonde hair," and uh, and you were like, "Oh yeah, the lady I just served." Tiger. Yeah, that Tiger. one. That woman caught me so off guard. Oh, we all oh, do. We all know this woman. We all like, we all know Beltran's mom. The, oh uh, no, the, the I the, mom. the minute he started talking about that, I knew exactly who it was. Yeah, yeah. That one was the most like when Beltran's mom did it. That was the most dramatic. Of those, um, I, I've had it before. The most Beltran's mom I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I've 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 had a few of those um, throughout my time. Where where you know, and usually it's 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 much more subtle, and I can just kind of brush it off of just like I mean, I'm, I, if I don't feel threatened, then I I don't care too much. Um, as long as they're not you know interfering with other people's gameplay. Um, but you know, yeah, Beltran's mom was going hard that day, and that was. That was something. She was um, looking to find a Beltran's dad. Yeah, well, and then and then um, she actually went on uh, Beltran's mom. After that, went on to J Pong, and and at, at that point, so 
she she was like it was she had found me at the candy cabs afterwards i bet i guess i guess we had formed a, a fast friendship or something at the killer queen cab she comes over to the uh the uh blast cities or the 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 versus cities and of course jay pong is there playing uh playing claw with everybody and uh she's like i really i really love that game pong and i was like i know beltran's mom this man is the Pong World Champion <laughs> and just totally tossed Beltran's mom right off on Jay Pong and just watched the sparks fly. So maybe that wasn't the nicest thing to do, but uh, he's a claw player. Who cares? <laughs> I'm sure he didn't mind it. I don't know. I don't know. if he He's not in the chat apparently, so he should have been. He should have known. He, this is like the third time Jay Pong has come up. It's, it's the free play Richardson bartender roundtable. Um... Let's uh. Fancy was here because I know he has so many stories about that, about all these ladies that. Uh, oh my God! Can he stop rating for a moment and tell us some of those stories, please? Just, just one. I don't know. I'll have to maybe I'll I'll like go try and tag him. I'll tell him the next time he has like five minutes to come and like tell the story. I'll be right back. Okay. Yes. Yes. And remember, it's Beltran's mom. Protect the innocent. Um. While she's doing that, uh, I guess okay. So, um, what are your favorite games at Free Play Richardson? Or yeah, whatever. Uh, Carissa, what's your favorite game there? Okay, so my favorite game mm-hmm. um, at Free Play Richardson. I mean, they took away all my favorite games. Oh no! Um, all right, well, what were your I favorite know, games there? Especially within those last few months, they took away like all the games that I really enjoyed playing. Uh, like medieval madness. Um, that was that was my real go-to. Um, and honestly, all the games that I really preferred to play were always at Denton. Mm-hmm. As you know, the Aerosmith pinball table. Yes, I do love Aerosmith pinball. Um, yeah, um, I'm trying to think of if I had to pick one at Richardson right now. I know you like VSAP. I know you like Vampire Savior. I do, I do, but we don't have it there all the time. Like we we have it at Denton all the time, or we did. All right, let's just go all free play then. All free play, your your favorite game, because you 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 are unique, and I believe you and Blomgren have worked in the most locations as anyone. Mike, have you have you worked in Fort Worth before? Uh, not Fort Worth, not yet, at least. Okay, so so both of you have worked in Richardson, Arlington, and Denton at some point, correct? Yes. Yeah. So. You guys are pretty unique in that category. So yeah, all right. All the free play games are, are open for, 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 for business. What's your favorite free play game, Carissa? Okay, well, it's definitely Aerosmith Pinball and Vampire Savior and House of the Dead. Mm. Uh, what about you, David? Oh, it's got to be Lord of the Rings Pinball. But that one's a pretty common known one. Everyone sleeps on the Star Wars original trilogy game that's in the back corner. It is so janky and so much fun yeah and no i every time i've gone to play on it no one's ever on it and when the movie came out this december they briefly took it away to do a promotion i think with alamo Mm -hmm. and i was ready to pick it if that game didn't come back gotcha gotcha yeah it 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 fortunately did that's that's a great game i it's i don't i don't give it a lot of attention just because um i played it a ton when it first came out uh, oh yeah, I remember playing on that thing at Chuck E. Cheese as a kid. You could find it a lot of places, and it mm-hmm. seems like now it's. It was one of the my... last really good games that I I saw released in the arcade. Um, yeah, that game's incredible and frustrating. It, it's everything you could want out of life. Yeah, and I I just love I don't know it does it does Star Wars well. Like you get to like actually like go through the scenes that you want to go through in a Star Wars game. A, a good job, good job they did there. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. And Death Ball. But Death Ball's finally starting to get the little bit of a cult following that it deserves. You're not wrong there. Death Ball is awesome. I miss it greatly. Um, that is one of the weirdest, best games I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, whenever they, they let us open up the free, free play arcade again, and uh, hopefully we're all back. That's going to be – I want to work in free play. I want to say – by the way, we're here to say free play. There's the logo. There's the website. Freeplayinc.com slash save the arcade if you want to give any help for anybody listening. Uh, you can buy merch, um, gift cards, 
sort of port to Patreon. I want to be at free play again, and I want to I want to be with you. Like like I, even even if it if it work, opens up again, and they tell me I can be community liaison again, and I'm not I'm not with this crew. Like the, I I love you guys. I I love coming into free play Richardson and seeing each and every one of you. So I hope I I hope I speak for everybody when I say that you will. It wouldn't be the same. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I mean, I definitely feel the same way. Um, uh, Kaylee, what's your favorite free play game? Uh, definitely Magical Drop 3. Ooh, <laughs> a popular choice. Yes. The, anything like puzzle games. And then if not that, I really love Rampart too. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's another great one. Yeah. It was, it was fun to have Spring Series Rampart. Uh, how, did you, did you play arcade games before you started here? Uh, not arcade cabinet games. I mean, I I was probably one of those kids, as a lot of other people that grew up in Garland, that went to Nickel Rama all the time as a kid. Yes. So, yeah. So I did play a lot of. That's where like, I went before Fruit Bear Richardson. Yeah. So I played a lot of like the Austin Powers game there, and like learned how to like just get all the tickets. I used to have the high score on the Dark Knight pinball there. Um, cause you would go all the time during the summer. Mm-hmm. So, um, those were the kind of like arcade games that I played and then maybe like Galaga or like Pac-Man and stuff like that casually, just wherever they had it, you know, but I was more, I'm more of like a PC gamer and now like a Twitch gamer than anything before. Wait, a Twitch gamer? What do you mean? Like Switch. Switch gamer. Sorry. I was like. I, I do play games on Twitch, so perhaps she means that, but I don't know a specific Twitch game. Yeah, Switch game. Sorry, that was my bad. I think I accidentally so, said so, so you're always on Animal Crossing is what you're telling me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Come to my island. Yes, excellent. Anybody else on Animal Crossing right now? I wish. Everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not. It, seem, it seems like everybody. Um, Blomby, what's your favorite free play game? Uh, You know, it's kind of hard to say. I could tell you that I've probably played Super Turbo more than anything else. uh, But a lot of the games that I really like aren't on the floor. Um, So for all the stuff that's not on the floor, I'd probably say uh, Mr. Driller that never got a full release. uh, Just really liked it. Very simple. I'd actually brought it in after hours on Sunday nights and played a bunch of the Kitchen Dudes. That's uh, your so game. That was a good time. That's your game, Uh, right? Vampire Savior was always a classic. We brought it in for the Halloween month. And that would always be Super Turbo Part 2. When the one, you know, the big blue, the candy cab, whatever cab we had at the time, whenever that was busy, I was pretty much always trying to get someone else to come play me on Vampire Savior. Um, other than that, uh, the game that I'm really upset about not being able to play is uh, the new uh, rhythm game that went to, Dow- uh, to Fort Worth. Either Who Beat, Jew Beat. Jew Beats. I don't know how you even say it. You Beat. Um, Jew Beats is how I keep hearing game. it pr- or pronounced. Yeah, it's at Richardson right now. I, I played it for a minute the other day. Yes. Uh, but I fell in love with it a couple weeks ago when I was on vacation at uh, in Denver. Akihabara Arcade had one. And even though they had Street Fighter, they had Vampire Savior on like a 50-inch mega low cab. I played more of that game than anything else. So what, Why that game other, over other rhythm games? So I have uh, no rhythm. I'm pretty bad at rhythm games in general. Crossbeats has too much stuff to remember. Swipe up, swipe down. Uh... Even when I played Guitar Hero back in college, I could only play on medium or easy. And any time that I got like flustered, I missed a couple notes, I wouldn't be able to recover. And that would be the end of it. Uh, with Who Beat or Jew Beat, uh, for whatever reason, I can keep up with it if I play on a slow enough speed, probably like level four, five, or six. And I'm just able to keep going very straightforward, simple. So, yeah, I. I... It resonates. By the time we got rhythm games in free play, I was so into like the community liaison job that I felt like I had to stick, keep playing Super Turbo and Third Strike and Killer Queen and all the multiplayer games. So there was no way I could actually like invest time in. Oh, uh, I think this game remi- the game that reminds me of WarioWare is pretty fun. What do you guys think of um, what's the name of it, Carissa? The shoot. Do you know it, Mike? The 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 WarioWare esque uh, game. Bishy Bashy. Bishy Bashy. Yeah. Bishy oh, Bashy oh, Channel. Oh yeah, that's kind of like Mario Party, the mini games. Yeah, it was like our last big release before they they forced us to close. 
way better than Pong. <laughs> <laughs> Them's fighting words. I was gonna say that's a hot take. O- only, only if uh, if J Pong gets here after his date today with Beltran's mom. Oh yeah. Well, J Kim, if you're in the chat, I hope you heard that, and I want you to remember it. <laughs> Start starting a war over there. Uh, did you did you play it, David Bishibashi? Uh, no. Every time I would try to, a swarm of typically white claw drinking frat boys would be on it. That mm. sounds uh, about right. Yeah, it was for whatever reason it really attracted that the white claw crowd when I was working. Um, so no, I haven't gotten to play it, which is why I'm still on Team Pong. I'm willing to be changed and drafted over, but I've got to get in there first. So. I like having it there just because of exactly what you said, David. The the white claw cloud, the white claw crowd, as you you described it, you know, is attracted to that ta- that that machine, and that machine is designed I, to be beat on. I was gonna I say, I think they can let out their anger for having to drink white claws, and so they're like, ah, you know, yeah, yeah, like pin- that self pent up rage they can finally get rid of. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, the, you know, the Jerry would bash away on on the versus cities, um, but some of those cabinets just just can't take the abuse, and and there are people in there who just want to pound on games, and uh, Bishibashi just sort of like sucks them into that vortex and is like, hey, hit me, and like they do, and then they don't hit the other game. So I'm I'm super yeah, happy Bishibashi came out. To do it on. What's that? I said, if you want to hit a game, that's definitely the game to do it on. Yeah, like Andy's in the chat, Andy Nubs, uh, Andrew Ortega, who is the um, the tech at Free Play Arlington, and they have uh, bubble hockey super checks, and that game takes a brutal beating, and it's just like, man, I'm super happy that it's there, and it's there to to attract that crowd that just uh is 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 getting uh a little too animated with their play. Um, the after, crowd that will toss their at-home controllers. Right, and, and, and it just gets crushed. But, like, that game, you know, it breaks down, and they have to replace all kinds of things that you wouldn't think would be possible to replace on that machine. Uh, whereas Bishibashi is just like, come at me. Come at me. It's okay. Um, are there any other questions in the uh, in the chat? And. And did we ever get Ramsey? Because I really want Ramsey stories. Uh, the thing is, Ramsey said that they're going to raid for another, like, 45 minutes. All right. I need a 45-minute long story. Uh, Blomgren, go. Just kidding. It, it could happen, but uh, I'm out of practice. I haven't talked to, like, anybody in, like, weeks. <laughs> like, it feels like the, this two-week period has really been, like, I, I'm just out of practice. I don't, I don't know how to do it. How, how have you guys been dealing with the with the isolation? Or are you isolated? I guess you're not Kaylee because you have your family there. Yeah, but I mean, we all try to like, I don't know, try and still keep our distance. Uh huh. Um, I mean, we all have like our own rooms that we're able to go to, but I mean, it's it's been nice and also kind of crazy mm-hmm. to like, not be able to get away, but also have people to talk to anytime, you know. So. Um, that's definitely been nice, but I don't know how you guys are doing it. Like, David, you have your girlfriend with you. Mike, you live on your own. Carissa, you have your sister. Yep, completely alone right now. So is it, is it, do you, are you liking it, the, the isolation? Do you miss, miss the people all around all the time or? Uh, you know, I, I really, uh, I'm an introvert and I'm kind of losing all my extroverted abilities right now. And it's kind of weird, but it's kind of nice, but you know, it's not forever. So I'm just trying to make the most of it. Gotcha. Gotcha. What about you, David? Um, it's been tough. I am definitely an extrovert. So I try to at least every day FaceTime somebody Mm -hmm. in my phone. Um, and then I bought. I'm trying to catch up and finish all of the Game of Thrones books, and I have, in the three weeks I've been in quarantine, gotten through two and a half. So we're p- plowing through that. Any Holy form cow. of escapism that I can find, you'll find me there. Anytime you want to come on the stream, David, you're, you're more than welcome. I, 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 get, I get tossed out here. Um, I'm here from noon till 10 p.m., so to say I lose 
track of things to talk to or lose track of time is 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 an understatement. That's why I book as many shows as possible because I can't I can't even come close. I I wouldn't trust myself to fill ten minutes of time, much less ten hours a day. So uh, if you want to you want to come chat with the old friends, then please. Yeah, I'll definitely make more of an effort too, especially now that I've run out of housework to do. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Carissa? Are you uh, are you dealing okay with the isolation and the quarantine? Uh, I mean, I'm doing what I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, it's just been uh, it's me and my sister and her boyfriend, and they mostly do their own thing, and I mostly do my own thing. But thankfully, I've had all these orders to fulfill that kind of keep me sane, and getting to go to work on the weekends and and help out with the with the to go orders and everything has really been helping bring back a sense of normalcy to my life for sure okay i wanted to ask about this i've wanted to ask about it for a long time and i don't know who is involved in this and and feel free to keep the secret like it's a it's a it is a group that doesn't exist i I certainly have been invited to a few of those but uh i heard that there was a free play richardson band is that true (gasps) what What? i forgot about this is is this is this true? Can I get any kind of confirmation? Ooh, do I need to I do it? Does it need to be changed? Do all the names be need to be changed that they were all Beltran? If there's a, <laughs> a band, I don't know about it. No. Yeah, so, not that I know of. <laughs> so this is kind of like a a thing that was always kind of said that wanted that they wanted to happen, but mm-hmm. just it's never come to fruition. Um, this was back whenever Corey Herndon was working with us. The owner, um, yes, for- owner and CEO of Free Play Arcade, Corey Herndon, uh, <laughs> was frequently behind the bar. Yes. Yes. So it started off with him coming into the mix, and um, him and Derek started bonding off of their similar taste in music and stuff like that, and. Um, so they were like, bro. Well, they didn't really say bro. That's more like a Ramsey thing. But uh, <laughs> uh, they said that they wanted to, you know, like potentially do some music together. And Ramsey's like, yeah, me too. I want to sing. And so then they were talking about, you know, like whenever we had those 80 cover, 80s cover bands come during um, certain events, you know, and everything and would mm-hmm. call Jack singing. Burton like that yeah Mm -hmm. that um they wanted to start doing it too but then they would call themselves just press play and then they would just do a bunch of covered songs as well we were like we can make it happen i mean you guys are already sourced here wait is that why i can't name my webcomic that just press play (laughs) (laughs) i mean they haven't trademarked it yet so i mean Now's the time. I know. I think mine was just press start. That's what I was looking for. And there was already something that existed like that. Um, so I didn't do that. Um, that sounds like a band from Scott Pilgrim, like the C-list band that gets kicked out. <laughs> yes, it does. I could see that. So I had been um, asking everybody about their side hustles. We've already gotten to the point with Carissa where we did a little show on it. And and Carissa, how did it go for you? Did you did you see any sales from it, perhaps? Uh, yeah, actually, I had a, a couple people, a couple different people actually inquire about some pieces that I had on the show that was really cool. That is um, fantastic. Let me uh let me put your your Instagram name up there because you can contact if you're interested in Carissa's art. I posted a, the entire show, and uh, on our highlights on Twitch, and you are at G H the l- number O S T F L three S H right? Yes, sir. I almost said the letter zero. Yes, the letter zero. It's right there. That's that's you on Instagram. So if you want to get uh, Carissa's side hustle, um, the art that we already featured um, yesterday morning, um, that's where you can find her. Anybody else got any uh, side hustles going? Uh, yeah. So um, I've been making a lot of cakes. So before this even happened, I've been making like uh, occasion cakes for people and uh things like birthday cakes or wedding cakes and things like that and uh so just in my 
spare time, if I don't have the cake order that I've been doing, I've been just kind of doing some like recipe testing and stuff like that. And um, even posted a video to like teach people how to make like the British Victoria sponge cake too. Um, so that's just been really fun. Baking has always been like a stress reliever for me um, just because you have to be so meticulous about it and be patient. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing. So if anybody needs a birthday cake or just wants a cake in general, <laughs> talk to me. Uh, what 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 type of like what what what's involved in a in a Kaylee custom cake? Because I I do know someone with a birthday coming up. So if I wanted a Kaylee custom cake, what would I what would I be ordering? Just anything. Oh yeah. So I mean, it can be anything from like give me a classic like yellow cake with chocolate frosting it doesn't need to look anything special mm -hmm. to like i want this to look like my cat you know <laughs> you know it's just literally a any sort of like custom cake that in regards to you like flavors so you can make my sad panda slipper cake yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely i can definitely make that Awesome. Kaylee's making a Ferrero Rocher cake for me right now. I am, yeah, on for Friday. Nice, Ooh. nice. Um, I know you made uh, you made the the Hayden birthday cake as well, right? Yes, I did. I made uh, Zoe's birthday cake this past weekend. Oh, you made that one too. Uh, have you done it more than once? Because there was another. It was I want to say it was Sterling's birthday as as well recently. Uh, Sterling, he got like tarts from 85 degrees, Okay. but I made, um, Stephanie's son, uh, James, I made his birthday cake and it was a Lego cake. Gotcha. What's the craziest cake you've made so far? Was it indeed somebody's cat? Yes. So I did make, Oh my goodness. Uh, I thought you were bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did make somebody's cat before. Uh -huh. Um, that was actually a couple weeks ago. She was like a little calico cat. She was really adorable. The best inspiration for any sort of cake, in my opinion. And and, um, and she was like, I, I love my cat so much, I just want to eat my cat. Yep, on its birthday. <laughs> on, its, on its birthday, oh my goodness. Yeah, she threw a little party for her cat. And I was uh, like, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of lady, cat lady that I want to be. Yeah, so so if they want to find you, Kaylee, or your videos where you're making cakes, where where is that? Yeah, uh, so I'm working on a website right now. Don't have it up just yet. Okay. Um, but you can see all of my work on Facebook. If you just go to facebook.com slash Kaylee Bakes Cakes, Kaylee you can find me on there. Find Bakes me in all those posts. Or on Instagram, is, I'm also at Kaylee Bakes Cakes. Is that all one word? No underscores or anything? Yep, that's correct. No underscores. Kaylee Bakes Cakes. I'm not sure if you can see the screen, but I've tried to put it up there now. Oh, I, I put yeah, cake. I, I need to put make, cakes. Uh, uh, cakes. Yeah, I, hold, hold on a sec. I got it. And then um, I also make cookies as well for, uh, I think Carlos mentioned, on his uh, Thanksgiving and his Christmas, I made uh, my triple chocolate, uh, triple salted chocolate cookies for him Ooh. and his Nice. I am actually more of the cookie person myself. Uh, I've had a few birthdays where I just went with the, the giant cookie cake. And I have, if you saw, when I exited out of here, when uh, when the first story was, was launched from uh, Carissa, which I will go back and listen to, Carissa, because I like your stories, um, I was definitely going to get her a cookie. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Blomgren, do you have any side hustles going right now? Uh, oh, no, God. honestly, like once I fully committed to the arcade, like that was it. I've I've got some investments and stuff like that, but you know the paycheck working full time is kind of nice. So I've never really had to deal too much on it. Like I've got my, you know, I've got little things, uh, but nothing too serious. So like your little projects here and there. So your side hustle was the arcade, is what you're telling me. No, basically my side hustle was uh, regain my sanity for three days and then get ready to do it again. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I know you. You are. You're the only one here. Did it, does anyone other than Mike Blomgren collect arcade games in any way? No, uh, I, I don't. I wish. Yeah, Blomgren is in the in that that side. Like, like, are you still buying uh, arcade games or or carts or anything? I'm actually kind of terrified. So, uh... oh shit, hold on. So I actually bought a bunch of stuff on Yahoo Japan a couple months back, and I got it sent over, 
and it's sitting in customs right now. I probably bought about between around four or five games, uh, probably spent about, I don't want to say between 600 and 800 on a package and it's sitting in customs. It's been about a week since it's moved or been touched. So I'm kind of terrified right now and I'm ready to buy more. So please come paycheck. <laughs> do you, uh, do you buy like carts or full arcade cabinets or, or what do you end up doing? You know, if I had the space, so right now I'm on a third story apartment. I definitely would have bought at least a couple of cabs by now. And it is part of the, uh, you know, it's a part of the dream, but it's going to be a little while. So right now I've probably got about 20 boards in my closet um, that I've accumulated over the past couple of years. I do have one arcade cab and I got that like in the first year I was working at free play. I don't really use it too much. It's Mr. Do's, uh, Mr. Do's wild ride. And okay. it's also has a do run run in it. So I would not have never guessed that again, game. not until I move. Yeah, it's too much upkeep for me. Can you can you can you work on the the cabs at all? Uh, I I can do a little bit now. Like I've I've been trained up a little bit by Josh. You know, I've kind of uh, learned some stuff through osmosis. But the big things I need to do now is really work on the monitor in it. And I'm still a little terrified to do it. Um, I've always talked about Tommy. Hey, you know, you know, let's come over. Let's start poking and prodding. But mm -hmm. since I haven't really used it at all in the last year or two, it's just kind of like eating up space. And I'm probably going to sell it off at some point. It's just a matter of how do I get it down three flights of stairs. <laughs> uh, Carlos says you can put all the cabs in his garage. So he's there for you. You know, I would. You uh, just buy as many as you want and put them in Carlos's uh, garage. He'll use it every single Yeah, sorry. Um... So, yeah, you, you ended up catching more, more arcade games. But, uh, David, did you have any side hustles going? Uh, I walk dogs for a company in Dallas called Dog Fit Dallas. If anyone needs some dog walking and dog training, let me know. Wow. I kind of want the uh, you walk dog side hustle uh, round table now. <laughs> Uh, I have a lot of dog stories, so it seems like, weirdly enough, this community is more of a cat community. Could be a hot take, could not be, but... That is uh, a definite. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it seems like it's a solid cat community, but um, I do have I mean, a lot of good dog stories. four dogs right now, at least, so I might, I might ask her, how much do you charge? Is it like a per dog thing? Is it like a per hour thing? Like, what's up, my dude? Ooh, so it's through a company, so I don't know what they charge for training but for me to walk them it's 30 for an hour so is business booming now currently no okay. uh, luckily they haven't had to shut down but because we have to go pick up the dogs we've mm -hmm. suspended work okay yeah i was wondering um, how, how that would be impacted like dogs yeah, still need to be walked but at the same time you can't really do anything we toyed with the idea for a while of like making a drop off to like point where they everyone brings their dogs to it mm -hmm. um but i i've read some things that dogs can transmit it some that say that can't i'm not a scientist I'm not a science person so i have no idea to comment on that either way but it just kind of ended up being that we decided to take a hiatus and we're hoping to come back within the next like hopefully by may depending on obviously what happens with the rest of the world I don't know if, um, if Bowling Mania is in the in the in the chat. I would ask him because he's he's working in a hospital every day. He he he's probably more aware of the uh, yes Bowling Mania Kit, cats and dogs are are they uh, are they transmitting or not transmitting today the COVID nineteen. So I yeah I the the um. Man, how long have you been doing the dog walk? Ooh, uh, I've been there since I moved here in October. Okay. Wow, what yeah. an interesting side gig. It's awesome. I don't have to talk to anybody, and I just get to hang out with dogs for four hours a day. Yeah, and uh, Bully Mania says dogs can catch it. Unsure about transmission, but would assume possible. Got it. <laughs> so, yeah, it makes <laughs> a lot of sense. he's not a cat person. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Um, my current favorite dog is a black and white Great Dane named Tux, short for Tuxedo. Very appropriate name. Mm -hmm. Um, 
he when he stands up, he's taller than me. He comes in, they measure him at about six foot two. And he's the best. Oh wow. Um, Kaylee, this this message we already asked David and Carissa over the weekend, but Kaylee, what was your first job? My very first job ever. Yeah, yeah. First gig. Uh, my first gig was Charlotte Roos. Rest in peace to that to that retail store. Ah, so you were um, in the retail. Yeah. So uh, I was selling clothes and getting 40% off. So all of my paycheck was going straight back into the store because <laughs> we had to wear their clothing. Yes. Um, yes. That's how they get you. Yeah. I yeah. dated someone who worked at Loft briefly. We couldn't afford her to work at Loft for very long. <laughs> It was just too expensive. So, yeah, I feel you there. What about you, Blomgren? Uh, sorry. So, uh, I was very fortunate. Um, my first serious job was... Hold on a second. Let me turn this. Uh, so, my first uh, job was working in... It was managing a research and development greenhouse down in Miami. And it was pretty cool. That sounds pretty cool, not gonna lie. And I know, David, your first job was <laughs> somehow I know, because we got into this Sunday, a paid choir gig. It was with a the story I shared had a graphic ending the other day. Wow, I don't remember oh, yeah. the graphic ending. You oh, know what? Yeah, the I the, the tease the is too great. Let's hear it. Thing. So I was doing a I was in a high school choir that was five people and a conductor. Mm -hmm. And we would travel around to masses. Or we wouldn't travel around to masses. We stayed at one place for masses. And then we would travel around to other gigs. And one of them was a funeral. And this is the only funeral I've ever even heard of where they do a rehearsal for the funeral. Uh, similar to like how they would do like a uh, rehearsal for a wedding. So they wanted everyone to come in and just walk through everything. Like hammer out all the details. And so we come in and we're singing and they bring up the jankiest casket I've ever seen. It's made of plywood and toothpicks. Uh, the glue is, was still drying on it. It was the... It looked like if you just made a shoebox bigger and threw a dead body in it. And so they bring it up and they put it down and we probably get through one more song and all of a sudden the bottom of the casket falls out from underneath it, carrying the body with it. I don't know how so, I forgot this. I definitely so it, remember it now. This is insane. So she decided to make a like surprise appearance at her own funeral rehearsal, and she just falls out from underneath with the, with the bottom of the casket, and everyone just loses their shit. Oh People God. are like, the family's, the family's screaming, the priest is like, running around trying to figure out if he should like pick up the body or not we're all just kind of standing there shocked as like 15 year olds already awkward enough we don't need to throw ourselves in there um i will never forget it and i hope that it happens at my funeral <laughs> that's that's in your will are you mean at your uh rehearsal funeral rehearsal yeah, that was at the rehearsal, not the funeral itself. Oh, you wanted to have it at your you funeral. You want yours at your funeral or your rehearsal? Oh, at the funeral. I got to one-up it. All right, cool. I was just, just asking for clarity's sake, just in case. Yeah, you're just no, going to have a special it. trap door on your casket just for that? Yeah, I'll have to find some willing, sadistic participant in the audience of the three people that would show up to actually hit the button. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just buy the casket beforehand and then, uh, like, rig it so that when the the, uh, the underside of it doesn't have anything underneath it, there's a timer, and then it'll drop the bottom. Kaylee, I'm well, sorry, uh, Carissa's thought about this. I was going to say, dang, you got this all set up. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, was, I only just thought that up just now, I swear. I haven't been thinking about that since I heard it over the weekend. Uh, Carlos wants to know, did y'all keep singing? Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> um, no, the, the song was quickly abandoned, and I think they paid us extra, which was cool. So, uh, we were talking about side hustles, and I, I know at least, you know, you, David, and, and Kaylee are, are performers, so, so like, that certainly counts. Maybe you consider that your, your main thing, but, like, tell us about your, your theater work, David. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, real, yeah. Quick, real quick, real quick. I do want to just say yes. that I do have to go ahead and head out. This was really lovely, and I appreciate Thank. you having me. Thank you, Carissa. Um, but yeah, of course, it was so nice talking with you guys. It was so good to hear from you. I miss you guys. Hopefully, I'll get to see your shining faces. Yeah, you will you be there on Friday? Uh, I will be there on Friday from um, oh, what time do I come in? Four to. Okay, cool. So, so Kaylee will be there filling out uh, uh, socially distanced orders. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, socially awkward order what? You'll, no, you'll, you'll be filling out the socially distanced combos. Because I know, I know that's been you and David putting together those beer lists. Oh, is that going to be her with me this, this weekend? What? Oh, I'll be there. You know it. Oh, right on, right on. Okay, well, I'll definitely see you guys. Cool. We will see you then, and 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 I'm I'm still gonna ask uh David, uh have have a good one, uh Carissa. I'm still gonna ask David oh, and uh. Take care. Have a good night. Bye. Bye, Carissa. Bye. Yeah. So so as we try and uh, uh continue to wait out this eternal eternal um Ramsey raid, so that I can hear about him getting hit on by everybody who walked in the doors of Free Play Richardson. Uh. I, I don't know where he is. David, tell me about the uh, the the theater gigs. So right now I'm casting a show that's on temporary hiatus, and I'm not going to actually say the show or the theater because I don't want to jinx it. They're having a little bit of concern about putting on the production, mm -hmm. but hopefully come, it should be about June to July, I will be in a musical uh, out here in Dallas. It is a rock musical, so... Hopefully, once this is all over and everyone comes back into the bar, you can ask me yourself, and hopefully, I, you can come see it. Um, have you have you worked a lot in theater in the past? Yeah, I've been acting. Nope. I was fifteen, so for about eight years, I've been performing. Um, that's actually what Kaylee and I went to school for mm -hmm. uh, in Colorado. She was a theater acting major, and I was a musical theater major. Did you go to the Colorado School of the Mimes? No, yeah, we went to... Actually. Come on. Went to... <laughs> I was going to say, no one thinks I'm smart enough to sell that off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we went to the University of Northern Colorado. Gotcha. Uh, what about you, Kaylee? Are you in theater? Uh, so whenever I started working at Free Play, I realized that I kind of had to... Um, put theater aside because a lot of the time the rehearsals are in the evenings mm -hmm. and uh, as a bartender you work in the evenings right <laughs> so um, I haven't been doing much theater but I do a, a lot of film work mm -hmm. so um, I do like commercials I do voiceover um, and uh, I mean just recently I did stuff with JC Penny so I did some voiceover work for them and I did some commercial work for them. And um, I've done a couple of recordings with Funimation this year as well. Um, just little things. I mean, you're not going to be able to hear my voice. I only really do Walla for them right right now. But um, do, do both of you have agents? I do. I'm I trying do to not. get David into my agency. What's that? I do. I have an agent, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to get David into our agency. Oh, okay. But at the moment, things are kind of like stagnant. At the moment, yeah, everything's stagnant. There's an agent in there. Yeah, uh, Beltran, don't don't bother. Don't bother. We we know. We already know about your agent gigs. Just just don't worry about it. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have? Uh, is there anywhere where we can find your work, Kaylee, as an actor? Um. Yeah. Uh, you can, well. Do you want I us to? Do you not want us to? It's okay if you don't want us to. Well, yeah, but I just can't really direct you to like one specific place. Gotcha. Well, where where, um, where are the three places that I could go and, and, and I'm, I'm just going to forego the Netflix tonight and have a, a Kaylee-thon. Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> um, you can go on to, um, so I was the uh, host uh, for the uh, weekly What's Up with Fan Guru whenever they were doing uh, their YouTube channel. Um, so if you uh, look up Fan Guru and you'll see my face on there, I have quite a few episodes with them uh, where we talked about like um, 
cons that were happening, new games that were posting up, um, new animes and shows and things like that. So um, I did a lot of that. Um, you, I don't know if you can really look up like the small commercials that I've done unless you really, really try hard because I haven't found any myself just like searching on YouTube. Um, and I mean, I do you I want can... us to? Do you want us to not find them? Because Ricky Box is here and he, he'll go find it. Hey, you know what? If he can find it, like, okay, I hope challenge accepted with him. All right, what what what's this, what what commercial are we finding? Um, you can look up a Pizza Hut commercial, and it was for a WWE Pizza Hut commercial. Whoa! Uh, I forgot who it was that was in it, um, but it featured two different wrestlers, and they were doing the uh, pull apart um, crusts, and were like dipping them. The pull dip pop. I remember that because we were all doing the pull dip pop, a pull dip pop uh, dance with it. Um, there's that one. Hold on, let me look at let me look at my resume. Because <laughs> <laughs> I still have yet to find that commercial too. Because they didn't send it to us whenever it was done. That's crazy. I wonder if it. You would get royalties from it, right? So it must have aired. Uh, so we, um, depending on where you film, you would think that you would get royalties. I wish we did. Um, but a lot of the time, whenever you work in like non-union states like Texas, Texas yeah. um, you get buyouts. So depending on how big the commercial is, in that instance, like we were like kind of featured. So um, we... Uh, we got just like bought out essentially is what they call it. So gotcha. they gave us like a flat fee for that. I understand. Um, what else? Um, I was in a lot of like city of Dallas stuff. I was also in a commercial for Parker university for the chiropractic school. Mm -hmm. um, I did stuff for Dallas for the uh, stoplight cameras, but I don't think you can find that now because they had to bring so, ads for stoplight cameras? Yeah. Oh, well, I think it was more so about, like, the, um, like, the, for the people that had to do, like, defensive driving for it, you know, where they okay. had to be like, this is whenever you should use it at your discretion. Like, if it's red, you should not go and all that stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. So you weren't in those, like, terrible drunken driving movies that we had to watch? <laughs> oh, no. No. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so the minions are on it. They will find it. Also, Carlos wants to know what anime you're watching. Um, honestly, I haven't. I'm not watching any at the moment. But if you have suggestions, let me know because I do need something to watch. I am watching through season three of Castlevania, which I can recommend season one and two, and I assume three is going to be great as well. Uh, but I have. Are you watching it on Funimation? I am watching it on Netflix. It's a Netflix exclusive. Oh, even better. Yeah. So there's, there's there's plenty of anime there, at least for a a anime noob such as myself. Um, Bully Mania says my first and possibly fave anime was Record of Lodos War Past. I don't know what that means. I wish I could. I wish I watched more anime. I wish I really do wish I I had both the time and oh yeah, High Score Girl too is is coming next week. You guys watch High Score Girl? Yup. David, you catch it? No. What is that? Oh my goodness! Cringy, Kay wait, cringy. Wait. It's Kay amazing. Kaylee, have what you seen it? it? High Score Girl. I've never heard of that. Okay, High Score Girl. You need to watch it. There's a lot of like thoughts in the chat right now whether you should or should not watch it. I will say you should watch it because it takes place in 90s arcades in Japan, and you guys have lived it basically in the last couple Ooh. of years. Ooh. Okay. I mean, it's not 90s bars in Japan, but it is 90s arcades in Japan. So, yeah, it's all it's all about a a a a boy and a girl and another girl as they grow up with uh with w literally with Street Fighter. Oh, I'm so down. I'm gonna put this on my list of things right now. Yeah, yeah I just sure. added that to my yeah. list. High score, girl. <laughs> yeah, I it's it's crazy. It's crazy how like. Yeah, we actually invited one of the uh, performers from High Score Girl to be at Spring Series, the now postponed Spring Series, and, and he had accepted. So, 
that uh, unfortunate, but you know we were we we're gonna have one of them out. When you see Guile being played, uh, that guy had agreed to, to come out. Is High Score Girl anime or live action? It is anime Lego. Uh, it, well, it's anime. However, the game scenes which are in the arcade are actual game scenes, so there is actual Street Fighter being played, and uh, so you get to see actual high level Guile play Lego in this anime. I promise. This sounds rad. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Honestly, I uh, let me. I'm gonna be fully honest with you. I actually have been watching an anime, and the anime I'm watching was Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I've been watching. Yo. The, I've been watching the old episodes that I used to watch as a kid. No, so, no judgment from me. Who are you banishing <laughs> to the shadow realm? Oh man, Ramsey and I were watching it one day, and then I just kept. I just kept watching. All right, I think I have stalled all I possibly can for for uh, the Ramsey. Uh, they are chasing me around the arcade stories. Is, is he is he is he available, or or do we have to wait for next time? I'll I'll see, but the uh, little spoiler mm -hmm. is. Um, you want to tell the story for him? <laughs> Just get the third generation story. <laughs> well, he's gonna tell it better. Okay, fair um, enough. The little spoiler is it was a uh, it was something about polygamy. So yeah, Mike had one of those. <laughs> Keep the faith. All right, so we'll start wrapping up. Thank you so much for for joining us. Kaylee's searching for Ramsey, so we can end on the Ramsey note. But uh, thank you, David, and thank you, Mike, for joining me. Of course, no problem. Happy to be here. Yeah, I think um, we're going to do the free play Arlington uh, bartender round roundtable, and they will get the benefit of me having hosted this one. Uh, so I'll have all the questions mapped out a little better as I continue to do this again and again and again, over and over and over again. But we'll do the free play Arlington one next week. I've already contacted LMA and Adam, and hopefully they'll they'll be here uh, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. And uh, I I'm sure we can get a good one going for Denton. I don't know if we'll uh, invite uh, Carissa back for that one since she spent so much time in Denton. Uh, but I'll try and hit all the all of all of the free plays, and then uh, if we're still stuck at home after that, then uh, maybe we'll go to uh, the the previous the the former bartender roundtable. I'll I'll uh, I'll break out my Rolodex and call up Manus and uh, and Chase Hoskins and see how that goes. Yeah, and then bring back Ramsey too. I just asked him, and he was like, "No, I'm not gonna be done for another 40 minutes." That's what I'm he like, said 45 minutes ago. I guess. Exactly. We're just a no. mom trying to get their kid off a game right now, getting punked. Just. I know. Really. All right, fine, fine. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Well, at least you have that to look forward to. He said next time, um, you you want him on, that he'll tell the story, any story. Excellent, excellent. So, well, I look forward to that. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and thank you, Kaylee, as well. I already said said thank you to David and, and Mike, but uh, it's been a good time. Glad to hear your stories, and uh, I, I I really, really, really hope I get to work with every, each and every one of you again. It'll it's happen. Been, yeah, it's been really oh, nice yeah. to be able to hear from you guys. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you, all right. David and Kaylee and Mike and Carissa. Um, yes, uh, Kaylee Bakes Cakes. If you want to see her videos and buy some cakes, uh, just come see David and ask him to sing for you in the uh, when you get your uh, your socially distanced combo, and he'll he'll do it from a distance uh, on this weekend. Uh, same with uh, Carissa and uh, Mike. I mean, I didn't ask you for your side hustle, but you said you didn't have one, so yeah, not really. Just go find Mike on. Do you play ST anywhere online? Do you play anything online? Dude, I've I've tried it before. Uh, I like thirtieth with the uh, patch. I played Sam Hooper for a little bit, but just I don't know. I I have no problem playing, you know, offline playing the AI. Like I'm kind of lame, but I can't do it. I can't play the AI. I get frustrated. I get visibly frustrated every time I try it, which sucks oh, because there it is. There I can it play is. it right now, except it will drive me insane. Uh, will Michelle be a part of Arlington? Andy, do you want Michelle to be part of Arlington? If so, I'll, I'll make her part of Arlington, or I'll, I'll ask. All I can do is ask. Thank you, guys. Thanks, yeah. Joe.
Thank you Thank so you. much. Have a good night, everybody. You're welcome. Yeah, you I'll see you guys later. Bye. Wash your hands. <laughs>